Hey everyone, this is Bradley Schneller with Stacked Coaching. On today's episode, we are talking with Stacked Coaching fitness coach, Michael Morrow, on his experience thus far with personalized nutrition coaching as well as personalized fitness program and how that has helped him progress out of his back injury. We're also talking about all of the changes occurring in our physical gym. So you won't want to miss that and hear about why and what we are doing locally in New Orleans. If you want to find out more about fitness and nutrition, check us out on Instagram at Stack Coaching or go to our website www.stackcoaching.com. Enjoy the show. Hey y'all, what is up? I am Bradley Schneller here with Stacked Coaching and I am with Stacked Coaching uh, fitness coach, performance coach, Michael Morrow. What's up, Michael? Hey guys. <laughs> hey, Bradley. Michael, this is audio. Most people listen to it audio only, so you can't just wave. <laughs> I articulated as well. We, you know, we, we're getting the ball rolling. I, I'm doing a performance for our visual and our audio i like it i like it so what you can't see with the visual if you if you're just listening what you can't see is this beautiful golden tan that michael has he just got back from vacation looking great thank you thank you um michael yes i i do want to give an update um about how, how many months ago was that you hurt your back uh for the the last time so just just to uh provide a little context i have been dealing with a chronic back injury for probably the better part of 10 years but wow. the most recent injury was this past december what what was the initial kickoff do you know uh it's usually um and sometimes it doesn't even have to do with anything that i'm doing at the gym sometimes sometimes it can be completely unrelated but I, I've come to find that I, I have a lot of chronic inflammation in my back that kind of comes and goes. And sometimes that's tr triggered by what I'm doing in the gym, uh, whether it be uh, lifting a lot of weight, uh, you know, putting undue load on my back, you know, increasing my capacity in a way that I, I'm not able to sustain at that particular moment in time. It might be a breakdown in technique or it may be like I just turned it funny. Yeah. But initially, though, like, do you think it was it from swimming or just overuse? I mean, over time, I mean, you're a young, like you're in your upper 30s. So. Sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I I would probably have answered that question differently a few months before. But knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. I am confident that my lower back injuries are the result of a lot of my body trying to compromise for a lack of stability and a lack of mobility in certain areas. Ah, uh, so long story short, you hurt, you hurt your back again. This last time was really bad in December. Um, and you initially, look, you took one week off, two weeks off what? I took a couple of weeks off. And it yeah. still wasn't better. It wasn't, no. I, I could pick things off the floor, which I couldn't do initially, but uh, I got under the barbell mm -hmm. with uh, the attempt to just back squat 95 pounds, which is uh, very, very light for me. Right. Uh, and I couldn't even get past a quarter squat. It was that mm -hmm. painful. Oof. So we hooked you up with Mesa, and Mesa's been programming your workouts. And how has that like arc been? Like, I know at first it seemed really slow to you. But how has the progression been? Like, what can you tell people at home that ha haven't been able to experience a uh, personalized program? And for this, like specifically for you, programming yourself out of pain? Yeah, so that that was really the, um, the impetus to my getting involved with Mesa is um, I realized that I was in this vicious cycle of injuring my back, recovering, getting strong again, and then injuring. So wash, rinse, repeat over and over and over again. And I was tired of that cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized that if I didn't address the lingering issues that were leading to these symptoms, that uh, I was just going to be in pain for the rest of my life. And I was tired of it. So um, what's really been great is, and it's a slow, gradual process, and I'm still involved with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
you know, I, I just told you today uh, for the first time in a really long time, and this may sound really infinitesimally small in terms of a, a success metric, but I got out of bed recently um, without any sheeting pain going down my back. And that, that's been the case whether I've been quote unquote healthy or feeling healthy and performing well in the gym or not. So I know what I've been doing with Mesa and the programming that she has designed for me is helping strengthen areas that I've never addressed before. A lot of that has to do with uh, unilateral movements. A lot of it has to do with balance. Um, but I'm targeting areas that in a typical workout um, are being neglected. Yeah. So... It, it, that's interesting hearing you talk about the things you've been doing and um, underlying areas where how you would answer it differently now. Someone asked you, like, what was the leading cause and stuff like that. Um, over the years, over that decade, you, you had to have, like, sought out therapy um, and pain relief. Like, what things did you do to try to get out of pain? So, I mean, I learned a long time ago, I've been doing things that are generally good for general health, but not assess, not necessarily going to address the problem. I, everything that I was doing was addressing the symptom. Yeah. So, you know, for the inflammation, you know, I'm, I'm on a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals that help with that. I'm on mega doses of omega-3, which helps with inflammation. Um, for the flare-ups, um, you know, I would take pain meds or Tylenol. Um, my sister's a PT, so I'd have her dry needle my back, which again, would give me great temporary relief. Yeah. Definitely. Because we're not addressing the symptoms. We're not addressing the problem. Right, right. And so for you, it was going right at those uh, stability, instability issues, right? Or maybe imbalances you might have. Yeah. That's awesome. Right. What has... I what have is, to say, a lot of it was really, and still continues to be really frustrating, right? Because I'm doing essentially really simple movements that are targeting one side of my body at a time. Uh, Macy has this one movement... Um, that she's been having me do, which is my least favorite, probably, of anything. And because I'm saying this, she'll, she's probably going to design it again for me this coming week. <laughs> um, where I'm doing a single leg RDL yeah. with a kettlebell in front, and I'm having to pass the kettlebell from one hand to the other. And it's an incredibly frustrating movement for me because oh. not only unilateral, but it's challenging my balance capabilities as well, which are severely limited. Yeah. Um, so it's frustrating, but it's good because it's something that I need to hone. Yeah, it's really interesting the difference between like fun programming and then programming that's specific for a purpose, right? And right. not that what we do in the group class is not what the purpose it is. It's to move people stronger, fitter, but we're talking about like, I'm assuming when I program the group class that everyone is healthy, right? right. Like there's, right. there's, you know what I'm saying? So when you have to get programming, either if it's like, hey, I want to hit this competition or I want to get out of pain or I need to address a certain need, um, it's the non-sexy stuff, Yeah, right? Which is tough, but I think it's tough, but it's also like you feel accomplished when you're done because you know you just progress towards the, the end, right? Exactly. It's temporary. It's not something you need to do forever. Um, it's just something to get you to a place to where you feel good and stable for a certain amount of time, right? Absolutely. You know, and it, it's all about putting the work in now so yeah. that when you get back in the mode of doing uh, more gen you know, general workouts that the rest of the gym is doing, I can perform at the level that is right for me and I can perform confidently without pain. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, well, cool, man. I, at this point, I just kind of wanted to give the people an update, um, on where you are, because I, I thought that was really neat because you were Mr. Com you were very competitive in the gym oh, and I, <laughs> yeah. And so this killed you that, you know, you were in that much pain, but to hear that you can now get out of bed with no pain is pretty awesome. And it's been two months, basically, right? Yeah, it's been a little over two months. Um, I, you know, I think one of the things that struck a chord with me, and it was one of these things where I, I kind of had to have a conversation with myself again, because you, 
you brought up a good point that I'm very competitive and we have, we do have a lot of numbers that are very competitive with themselves and with their own abilities and what, what their expectations are when they walk into the gym, they see the workout on the board and they think I'm going to lift X amount of weight. I'm going to finish an X amount of time. Right. Um, and if they can't, they're not able to do that. It's very frustrating. What I, I basically had to sit myself down and say is essentially you're not training for anything specific. You're not getting ready for a meet. You're not getting ready for a big competition. So give yourself the time and grant yourself the patience to remedy everything that you've been doing wrong over the years. Um, and, and by doing wrong, I mean just that, that wash, rinse, repeat that I've been going through before. And I, I'm now... I've decided that it's more important for me to take the time to, to, to right these wrongs and to program myself out of pain so that I'll have many, many, many more years to come in the gym. Yeah, it's interesting the way you put that. I really like that because that's something that I also like want to get across to our nutrition clients um, is because... I want them to take a step back sometimes and say like, hey, this is a long journey, right? Um, all the things that you've tried in the past has been like quick to get results. And sometimes as a coach, I'll be honest, I feel pressure like to deliver results. Like if we go three or four weeks and, you know, either the scale is not moving or, or whatever, um, like I feel hot, like under the collar when I, when I do my check-ins because, you know, I... I, it takes a little bit for a client to trust you, right? Um, and there's many different factors to losing weight or transforming your body. Like there's a ton of different things that does, has more to do with food. And to just um, be able to get the client to trust you that like, hey, take a step back. Let's work on the small things that will work for the long haul. Um, is difficult, but it's also the right thing. Right, right. You know, and I can say the same. So, you know, in addition to being a programming client with Mesa, I'm also a nutrition client with you, right? So I'm, I'm taking part and I'm taking advantage in everything that Stack Coaching has to offer. And I have to say, again, you know, I've already voiced my frustration. Right. Uh, you know, understanding that I'm, I'm going through this process and there are going to be frustrating moments, but I've, I've voiced my frustration with certain aspects of the programming, which I know are means to an end. I'm right. having the same frustration with the nutrition, but again, I know it's a means to end. I'm, I see the improvement. I see where the program is taking me. I'm not qu quite where I want to be yet, but I can see the progress and that's encouraging. Yeah. So is part of that because of all the weight you lost? It is. I'm still- Wait, you lost 30 pounds? I, unlike probably some clients, I'm not interested in losing weight. Right. But I know, I know this is step one for me to lose and then I'm going to build back. Yeah. So how, how much weight have you lost? 30? I lost, no, just over 20. Just over 20. And about how many weeks? Seeing myself in the mirror and in videos now, I'm like mm -mm, too skinny. How, how many weeks? Uh, we started at the beginning of December. Okay. So just over two months. All right. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, so what I, what I told you, and just for those of you paying attention at home, because Michael was very much like, wanted to shed a little fat, okay? But I, ideal, like goal was to be jacked, wanted to look jacked, right? Um, which is what a lot of us want. <laughs> huh? Cover model jacked. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So, um, so here's, there's two different approaches we could have taken to this. Um, for, for those of you listening at home, we could have tried to um, rearrange Michael's macronutrients and kept his caloric level pretty high and taken this really slow approach to where you don't lose much muscle. Um, and so in order to not lose much muscle while shedding those few pounds, it would be really slow. The process would be really, really slow. Um, the process I took, because Michael was already eating about 3,000, 3,100 calories when he came into the program. Now, Wait, for those of you don't- That was a lot until I started. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but what people don't realize is that Michael is, what are you, 6'4"? Oh God, I wish, only 6'1". 
six one. All right, but you're a big dude. You're a big dude. And despite the fact that you think you're skinny, you're 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 solid. You have some really beautiful legs. Um, you got that swimmer's body. Uh, so uh, you have the swimmer's V back. So I am. I, I was just looking. Actually, and the only reason why I was looking at this because I was sharing my success with my sister. Oh yeah. Um, and I shared with her the very. We take you know for those of you who are part of of Stack Nutrition, um, you know that we we do uh, uh, we do a photo diary that we update every week. So I shared with my sister my very first back photo and then my most recent back photo and the transformation was pretty dramatic. Yeah, so what we did is we actually, we took Michael's 3,000, 3,100 calories. We, we, did, a, we did a cut. Um, we took a, a percentage off of those calories, uh, kept his protein pretty high, um, redistributed his fats and, and carbs to um, more of a diet that or a distribution that fits him, his goals and how he currently exercises. Um, and we started out from there. And it's funny because the first couple of weeks, Michael was bitching to me like crazy about how hungry he was. And I'm like, dude, you eat the same amount of calories as me right now. <laughs> Come on. It's a big adjustment though, to go from 3000 to like just 20, above. Seconds. No, I, oh, my, right. Very first week that I cut, I went from just under 3,000 to, I remember this like it was yesterday, 2,190. <laughs> and that was tough. That was real tough. But you got used to it though, right? Uh, I guess. <laughs> and so where are we up now? We, we got to be up in the 26s now, huh? I think we're in the 26s, yeah. I, I'm trying not to pay attention to the caloric number. I'm just paying attention to my, my macros. You went from a pretty pretty higher fat diet to a lower fat oh, diet. I how, no it, how much fat I was eating on a daily basis. That transition was difficult, but how has how has your body adjusted? Uh, it's the the adjustment has been in the way that I've spaced out my meals, and I found if um, you know, and I this this is obviously something that I learned just through trial and error. Um, if I space my meals out in two to three hour increments. Mm -hmm. And essentially, always keep something in my stomach. I'm not trying to bite my arm off. Okay. Well, good that's, deal. That's been my solution. Yeah, and look, the solution for everybody is is different. It's personal, right? And that's that's what we want people to try to find. Um, so, well, good for you, Michael. All right. So, but happy so far? Yes, I am. I am. Again, yeah, we're starting to see the muscle mass come back. I mean, part of it was you really couldn't work out. And right. we did a caloric cut and you couldn't work out. Um, so your muscles were a little deflated. Uh, however, we have we've been picking that back up massively quick. Um, and uh, you can start to see the difference. So, yeah. And needless to say, I'm very happy um, that I, I, I think soon I'll be getting back on the barbell. Maybe not doing a lot of uh, heavy lifting, but at least some barbell work. So I'm, I'm very anxious to be doing that. Awesome. Well, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to you because um, for those of you who don't know, Michael is a marketing and branding wizard. That's his, that's his full-time job. That's, it's, that's actually on the business card. <laughs> it should be. Um, and uh, Michael has been helping us with this transition from Rue Fitness to Stack Coaching. Um, so at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it over to you, brother. Well, I, I'm, I'm just gonna question you on that. What is that all about, Bradley? What do you mean transition from Rue Fitness to Stack Coaching? What does that mean? Yeah, so, okay. So what, what we are doing is essentially we are, you know, Stack Coaching has been around for a few years now um, and it has been strictly nutrition. Uh, about a year and a half ago or two years ago, we started with online programming um, and we started writing workouts for people around the country. Um, uh, pretty personalized, okay, but not necessarily being virtually coached. There's a, there's a little bit different, okay? Um, like Michael is virtually coached um, and we have a handful of clients that are just virtually programmed. Uh, virtually coaching means that you get a lot of feedback, um, videos are asked to be taken, you get feedback on your lifts. Um, the program constantly changes. 
And I don't mean like cycle to cycle or month to month. It's like week to week, the program changes. Um, and so there's a big difference based off of your feedback. But we've been doing that for a while. Um, and, you know, I've, I've told this story um, when I tore my shoulder and I, I saw therapy for three years, went to physical therapy every week, um, never got better. I, I was finally going to get surgery. And then I found um, Mesa <laughs> and she fixed me in six months time and I was stronger than ever. And I wanted, and I saw like, it felt, it felt a lot like what we were currently doing in fitness all of a sudden seemed very trivial. And there was a power behind what she was able to do with me that I wanted to bring to other people. Um, and it didn't mean that I wanted to all of a sudden just like jettison the group model, right? Because I still love group fitness. We just had an awesome group event on Saturday. Uh, we did Wadi Gras. So for those of you who don't know, Wadi Gras is a competition. We, a CrossFit competition that we have held outside for a really long time in Tad Gromley Stadium. Um, all these different CrossFit gyms and people from around the state, the Gulf Coast have come and competed. Well, this year, we decided to just do it in the gym. And it, it, it's, it's a lot of effort. And I didn't really want to do all that effort anymore. Um, and so we held it just in the gym, just for our members. Uh, we had one of our members come out and cook some tacos. Uh, we had beer from Port Orleans. They donated a bunch of beer. Thank you, Port Orleans. Um, and we just hung out, worked out, and it was awesome. And I really loved it. And I love that energy and atmosphere. However, there comes a time when that isn't always great for us or doesn't work for us, or we show up to the gym on a daily basis and it sucks. And by I mean, it sucks is we can't do anything or we can't do anything at home. And so what I wanted to be able to do was provide a, another way or a solution to those issues. Um, not everybody likes that solution, right? Like not everybody likes that and it's okay. And I, and I feel like I probably did a pretty poor job of explaining what I wanted to do uh, over the last six months, um, but a lot was going on. <laughs> and that's for just another to reiterate, podcast. Just to reiterate, the group model is not going away. The right? group model is not going away. We, we are still having our group classes, um, but we, what we wanted to be able to do was train our coaches, not only train our coaches, but bring in higher and bring in Mesa to be our direct point of contact because she has been doing this for a while now. She's a physical therapist um, who is probably, I, I don't know anyone better that can program someone um, specifically to get them out of pain and fully functioning in a way that they can handle a high level CrossFit competition with no issues. Like I, I seriously don't know anyone better. So we got her on staff to do that. She's training some of our coaches to be able to do that as well, uh, because I wanted to be able to provide a solution that wasn't out there, right? And I mean, it, it's out there. It's just not in Louisiana. Um, and I wanted to be able to do it in person as well. Um, and then build a performance center around that. Um, and so I decided... Go ahead. Let me dive into that a little bit. So you're, you're talking about, and I can see in your Zoom background that we're now, it looks like we are moving headlong into stacked coaching performance center. Talk about that a little bit. And I'm also seeing the tagline, a fitness revolution is coming. What is this revolution? That sounds like change. That sounds like a bad thing. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. So, you know, Essentially is what we're trying to create, okay, um, not trying to create, what we are creating is a solution to a problem that no one else has a solution for in this area, okay? Um, and I wanted to provide a facility that not only can handle that, but could handle all of your needs in terms of wellness, uh, from nutrition to programming someone out of pain, um, and then once you're done with that, you can move right back into the group model as well. Traditionally, right now, you have to go to a physical therapist. You go to PT sessions. And what it looks like is here's this list of five stretches or mobilizations you need to do. Let me do some dry needling on you. See you next week. Right. Um, and, and here's what happens. Here's what happens, Michael, right? 
No one does that shit. Do you know why? Because they have an hour to work out. You know what I mean? Like, not it, are there people that are really diligent and and show up 30 minutes before and get all that stuff done? Yeah, absolutely. But realistically, the drop off for that is so high, right? And so what we want to be able to create is a program that all of that stuff is written in. And not only is it written in, but it progresses as you go. And that's your workout. Yeah. Um, and what we find is, is actually that amount of work combined with good nutrition will get you greater results than you've ever seen just attending a regular group class. Yeah. So what you're saying is that I don't necessarily need to go full steam ahead for my full hour in order to get the benefits of this program. No, no. I mean, uh, the program is, is written specifically for an, um, the minimum dosage of work you need for that day. So some days that could be 35, 40 minutes and some days it could be longer, right? right. It depends on where you are, what you've already done that week. Um, we provide uh, like feedback reviews throughout the week that asks us how you're feeling, what are your stress levels are like, what your nutrition been like, what your sleep been like. And the reason we ask those questions um, is because that helps us decide your capacity levels, right? right. So if you're, if you're super stressed out, if you haven't been getting a lot of sleep, if your load you know, or your, um, your nutrition's been bad, whatever it's been, right? Like you are not in a position to have five one-hour intense workouts. So we dial the dosage down a little bit, okay? Uh, not only to keep you safe, but so that you don't have a setback, right? Like we don't want a setback. You know, setbacks happen. Also, progress isn't linear. There's going to be ups and downs, right? Um, but we want to do the best job we can uh, in regards to the feedback you give us in order to move forward. Right. You know, and I have to say, being a formal, former disciple of the, uh, my workout was not successful unless by the end of the hour, I am writhing around on the floor in a puddle of sweat, gasping for air, dry heaving. You don't have to do that every day. And you don't necessarily should do that every day. You know, that's not right for everybody, right? All right. And look, I, I, I write, for right now, our group class is probably like an hour and 15 minutes of work. We cram it to an hour. <laughs> like that, that, is, that is legit the issue. Um, but the other thing that we try really hard to do is empower each individual to listen to themselves and being like back off of that today or maybe you're only doing three sets or you know let's change this time you don't need to do 12 minutes you can do eight you know um because what we do is we took away a lot of the the whiteboard stuff right um not most things are not a competition most things are not uh the reverse has happened where we have a really hard time when it's time to make it a competition, which I'm okay with. Okay. Uh, but I think you can choose not, not, I think, I know uh, we have the ability to choose our spots and, and keep that level of fun there, you know, just enough to where um, we're not hurting our progress. Yeah. Well, let me ask you about some of the physical noticeable changes that are that are happening in the gym you know I no, i'm noticing there are workmen there putting up some new equipment maybe what, what or maybe an yeah. ac what's that all about yeah so <laughs> i've been getting blasted about this pretty good uh <laughs> because people are like oh i want to work out in the heat well we are still going to work out in the heat okay i'm just i am having an air conditioner installed because as a gym owner of 10 years as a crossfit affiliate for 10 years okay uh, I am tired of the humidity in South Louisiana destroying our equipment. So essentially what I'm doing is uh, air conditioning the space uh, so that we can, on humid days, have the doors closed and have the, the, the air conditioned <laughs> to remove the humidity and keep our equipment nice. Uh, which also means, though, what we, the other thing we're doing is we're changing out a lot of the garage doors for glass and getting some glass French doors in there so that 
we can open up the doors and keep the airflow nice for people mm -hmm. when it's beautiful outside. So it will still feel like outside. That's what a lot of people love about Rue is that it feels like they're working outside um, because of our space. We, our entire goal is to keep that. Like, I want to keep that. Just when it's nasty, I want to be able to close it. Well, and then also keep all of the equipment in an air-conditioned environment when people aren't using the gym. Yeah, right? yeah, good point, good point, right. What other physical changes are coming to the gym? Yeah, so we're upgrading the bathrooms. Um, we are redoing our uh, front desk area. We're doing like a self-service QR code retail space. Um, look, if you're paying $200 every four weeks, right? Like. I trust you. <laughs> also, we're a family and we have a limited membership, right? Um, and what do I mean by have, we have a limited membership? Well, that is, we are actually making our space smaller. Um, part of what I wanted to do is, like, we're focusing on a higher level of fitness, right? For sure, but I wanted to make it a little bit smaller. Um, there was a time when I knew every person's name that came to the door um, and all of our coaches knew everybody's name and that time got away from us, right? As the gym grew. And so um, by creating a smaller space, um, I wanted to go ahead and bring that back. Uh, I wanted our coaches to know every single person that walked through the door. Now, there might be some people we don't. And the reason that exists is because we put in a... Uh, an electronic door lock so that our, our members could have unlimited access to the gym. Uh, so it means even when we're not there, you can show up at midnight and work out if you want. You can show up on Sunday afternoon. There doesn't have to be a class going on for you to show up. There doesn't even have to be a coach there for you to show up. Um, we have one of the other things is we're upgrading our equipment to provide a little bit more safety features as well um, so that when you are there by yourself, uh, you'll be in good shape. When can we expect all these changes to, to take effect? So the air conditioning is almost done. Um, they've been in there all week. The bathrooms are getting started in the next couple of weeks. The wall goes up or we're cutting our space in half um, the first two weeks in March. And right, or, right around then, will they come in and drop the turf in? So we're putting a bunch of indoor turf in. We're actually putting 100 feet, 100 feet of turf in so that Gerald can come in and do sprinting drills with people. So we'll be able to sprint indoors in the turf, which is something not a lot of gyms can do because a lot of gyms might have turf. They don't have 100 feet of turf. 100 feet is a long way, okay? Um, so we're getting some new sleds to push in there. We're getting some new bungee cords to be able to do uh, a lot more higher level running drills. And by higher level running drills, I mean just stuff that professional athletes do that we're going to bring to our normal members because they can do it. It's just running. Um, and we're going to prep people to be able to do that. So that's part of why we're calling it a performance center. Yeah. So with that, you, you're, you're calling it performance center. Does that mean that the CrossFit model is going away? In terms of what? In terms of the type of or the style of workouts that I guess that people normally associate with CrossFit? For us, the style of workouts that people normally have associated with CrossFit have been slim and far between at Roo, um, you know, stacked, formerly known as Roo, uh, for a long time, right? We're still an affiliate. We're still in a CrossFit affiliate because uh, I believe in functional movements, you know, uh, varied time domains. Um, so at, you know, different levels of intensity, I believe in that. Okay. Yeah. I absolutely believe in that, uh, which is the original CrossFit methodology. Um, so we have always been different. We are still going to keep that level of group fitness. Um, the, the bigger thing that has really happened over the past year with our programming and probably more so in the last two months, um, is I incorporate everything. And I think that's, what's different about stacked than a lot of fitness gyms. And I mean, not just CrossFit gyms, I mean, fitness gyms, period, right? 
there's, there's no dogma when it comes to us. If there is something at a Zumba class that I think would benefit <laughs> our members, we're going to be fucking doing some Zumba. All right. <laughs> inspiration from everywhere. Yeah. Inspiration from everywhere. If it's, if it's good for us in a fitness way, I'm going to try it. Right. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to incorporate it. I am not married to any one thing. Um, I am married to providing the best product I can provide to our members. And look, sometimes, sometimes that means, uh, you know, I swing and I miss on some workouts and that's okay. Right. Um, but you have to try, right. If you never, if you never, if you never swing the bat, you're never going to hit a home run. Right. Um, so a lot of people want to take some walks out there. That's not me. You know, um, I'm trying to hit the ball and, you know, more so than not, we've crushed it, you know? Um, and I think a lot of times, maybe I should do this more often to be super honest is have these conversations because I think a lot of times, you know, there's misconceptions about lifting, weightlifting, what it is. Um, I know when we switch to having like one main compound lift, which would be like a deadlift or a squat or a bench press, and then into a lot of accessory work, you know, I got a lot of pushback. I got a lot of other gyms out there saying we don't do weightlifting. That's bullshit. Accessory is weightlifting. It's all weightlifting, yeah. right? Like if it's resistance training, it's weightlifting. Okay. Now, what you should hear is that if I'm combining a lot of accessory work into our compound lifting and our generalized programming, that means that you are getting a lot of what Michael is doing on a personal level in the group class. Um, and so what I'm trying to do is if I can make your single limb strong, your compound lifts are going to be a lot stronger. That was showcased beautifully on Saturday. And what do I mean by that? Um, the last time I cleaned 275 was a full squat clean uh, in a competition like four years ago. And I, four or five years ago, and I just come off a year of weightlifting only and Olympic weightlifting only. And then I haven't like, I, I might clean once a week, power clean once a week, you know, maybe I don't do it very heavy. Um, and I ripped out 275 PR my power clean. Like it was nothing on Saturday on four attempts after a running, uh, sumo deadlift high pull and box jump workout mm -hmm. boom 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 275 okay so my point is you don't have to do those lifts all the time in order to be able to lift heavy you can do the accessory work that keeps you balanced okay uh, that keeps each limb strong reduces injury you know helps prevent injury um, and then when you're ready to showcase your abilities it's there it's in the tank you know, uh, an analogy came to mind that may or may not be on point, but I feel like it's almost the, the Mr. Miyagi method, mm -hmm. right? where sometimes a lot of this accessory work and this unilateral work is us painting the fence. Right. And us going, where, how, where and how is this going to be applied? And not realizing that we're actually learning things and we're teaching our body things and we're building strength to do the lifts that we want to do and, and are, are a marker for increased strength and, uh, and fitness. Yeah. Yeah. And so look, there's different ways to make the accessory work fun, right? Like I do some accessory work before the big lifts. We do some accessory work after the big lifts, you know, it's, we got the, the new thing we're doing, the hot start. Yeah. Everybody loves a hot start. Um, you know, and it, it just makes it, a little bit exciting. Is it fast? Yeah. And look, I've gotten some feedback where, you know, I had one person say that it felt like we were just pulling out equipment the whole hour. And I took that and all right, I'm going to say, how can we do all this with less equipment? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and I've been, I've been, that's, that's stayed in my mind. Um, and I've been trying to keep that up to where to make the flows a little bit better, but you'll never know unless you try it. Right. Yeah. So when is this whole transformation going to, be realized when when can all of our members expect the new stack coaching to take effect i think we should be ready by april 
I'll, I'll say April no later than May. I want to give myself four weeks just in case. Um, but uh, most of the work should be done by April. Very exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm super pumped. Awesome. Well, I'm excited too. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Like I said, you know, I, you know I've been appreciating everything that's been go gone into this and am now a client in both respects. And I can say unequivocally it works yeah i appreciate that look you did crossfit for a decade in new york right and yeah. it was you worked out at a box with some games athletes right yep um and we were already kind of doing some of this stuff when you came here so like how have you thought thought the marriage has been between what we're doing and traditional crossfit I, you know, I think you have to kind of weigh where you are in your fitness journey, you know, to that end. And I think that's what was really successful about our programming. We are programming for everybody. Yeah. We are not programming for elite athletes, for game athletes, for people that are going for the gold. We are programming for everybody who wants a personal level of self-improvement. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we have, we have someone in the gym that is their main goal is to crush CrossFit competitions. Mm -hmm. They don't do the group class. I, I personally program them. It's Dylan. Um, I, I program Dylan. Uh, he does nutrition coaching and programming with him. So he's pretty much signed his check over to me every, every month. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he looks great and he's crushing the gym. We actually just switched. He's got some extra time on his hands now. Um, and I, I don't think he's 30 yet. So that makes a little bit of a difference. So we're actually moved into cardio mornings and weightlifting afternoons um, right now to get him really revved up for competition season. Um, but that's, you can do that with personalized program, right? Like the group class wouldn't be good. And he probably wouldn't be satisfied at a lot of just any group classes, like right? what he wants is very specific. Yeah. He has very specific goals. So that requires a specific program. Yeah. But the beauty is, is he's working out in our gym while other people are doing the group class. And, you know, we have, we have my aunt Judy who yeah. is doing personalized programming with Mesa. Um, and she's working out and her goal is to move well, feel better. Um, and she's working out right next to like 28 year old Dylan who is out there crushing skulls. Um, well, I think that's a great point um, because, and I, that's one of the things that I use to diffuse a lot of uh, and, and debunk a lot of myths that I, I hear about CrossFit because when I tell people, as it's usually an entree, you know, to, to say that, to go through the spiel of what we do uh, takes a little bit more time to say that, you know, I work out at and I coach at a CrossFit gym. And usually the most common reaction to that is, oh, well, that's too intense for me. Yeah. My, my initial response to that is, first of all, intensity is controlled by you. Okay. Your workout and your time in the gym is only as intense as you decide to program it. Right? Yeah. We, we can only provide the motivation. You are going to provide the ultimate means to an end for yourself. But the other thing that I can say specifically about our gym, that's different from a lot of other CrossFit gyms, like the box that I was in in New York, we cater to people of all fitness types and all ages. We've got teenagers up to senior citizens. And I think that's a testament to not only what our gym has been able to foster, but the programming. Yeah, that, and, and I want to point this out because I was hesitant for a long time to allow people doing personalized programming in our gym. And by a long time, I mean like eight, nine years. Like mm -hmm. I didn't want it to happen um, because I was afraid that it would create like classes in the gym. And by classes, I mean like levels of athletes that might look down upon other that. And now you have clicks and riffs in the gym and everything like that. So the fact that we can have Dylan work out next to Judy, all while an entire group class is also going on, has to do with our culture, okay? 
Um, and what I mean by that is, I don't think we could have done this two years ago. Our culture is different now, okay? And our culture is like, I don't give a shit about what your workout is and what that means to me. Like, I, like, I want Dylan to succeed. I want him to crush his workout. But in terms of how that makes me feel, or do I care more about Dylan's workout than Judy? No, I don't, right? I care about them the same. Are you having success? Awesome. Are you having success? Awesome. That's what I care about. I don't cater to one person more than the other. But what that took to get there was tearing a lot of shit down. Yeah. Right? Like you had to tear down that competition mentality, like tear it down. And by yeah. tear it down, I mean, we tore it the fuck down. Right. And I don't, I don't like to curse on this podcast, but I had to there to stress that like we tore it down. Right. So now that's completely gone. All right. And it allows people to thrive on a self-motivated basis. Mm -hmm. And it, and again, it doesn't mean when the time comes and the time is right, we can pick our spots and have a little competition with each other, but you know what there's not in our gym. There's no clicks. There's no one getting pissed off about what someone else did on a workout. There's no one cheating reps to try to beat someone else because we don't care. Right. I don't care about your workout. You don't care about mine. I don't care about yours. We're out here to just to get our fitness on because the culture we have created is one of wellness. And that is all of our goals, right? To be, to be the fittest we can be as we progress towards an older age, knowing what the big picture is. And it's never the, the short term, it's always the long term. And I think that's what we do really well. Yeah, and it's a much more mature approach to fitness. Yeah, absolutely. And that truly makes us different. Well, I'm excited to see the evolution come to life. I think it's gonna be exciting for all of us. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I appreciate you jumping on here and uh, talking with me. So Absolutely. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Sounds good.